Welcome everybody. Good evening. How are you all today? We're good. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Okay, doing well. Thank you. And uh, believe it or not, I'm excited for you guys, and I'm sure you are too. Let's pray and begin. Father, we thank you for everything. And thanks for having taken care of us and for still doing it in a grand way. Thank you for your children who have decided to take the path that you yourself had started for all of us who will be yours. We thank you for that and we thank you for the decision they've made and we ask that you strengthen their resolves, resolve so that they can uh, know and be sure, they're sure, that they want to follow you, the only true God. Thank you for everything. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Tonight is different. Before I get into the study, I'll ask if anyone has a question, you know, a burning question or even one that's sleeping. Just let it slip and ask it, please. Any question at all. Even if it's uh, outside the, uh, the scope of what we are studying. Nothing? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't like silence, so I imagine silence means that uh, you have no questions. Right? Okay. So yeah. let's... I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of how to put my, um, my questions, so I'll wait until I read them. Okay. Okay. All right. Very well, thank you, and thanks for asking. Okay, my day was great. All right. Okay, so let's start uh, with the, the the chapter and verses that I had asked you to read before you come here today. Okay, it's it was uh, uh, Romans chapter six. All right, we will consider verses 1 through 14 and then 22 and 23. All right, let's see. Let's see what it says. What shall we say then? All right, that means there were many things that were said before. So he says, what shall we say, say then? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? And the answer to that, my Christian brothers and sisters, is no, not at all, not in the least, no, never. <laughs> okay? All right. <laughs> and uh, if we were to use a, a term that's very commonplace, we would say, no, over my dead body, right? And you know why that? because the rest of the text is going to say it to us over our dead bodies right shall we continue in sin so that god could give us more grace certainly not how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it huh we died to it <laughs> okay or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ. You see that, people? That's the thing we've been studying. So he says, as many of us has been baptized into Christ, Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. Remember, I always show you this sign, right? Because you're going to plunge and uh, that liquid 
that clear liquid really symbolizes earth, dust. You're saying that now, you know, I'm dying and I'm going to be buried. And then what else? Now, therefore, we were buried with him uh, through baptism into death. Okay, that's what we do when we get baptized. We are plunged as if now it's like I'm I'm dead. The person you knew before is dead. Why? Okay, the text continues. It says, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, uh, you see the, the even so, pay attention to it, okay? So if you guys have any noise around you, chase it away because this is very serious. This text is so beautiful, all right? Let's go again. So when you get baptized, you get baptized into Christ's death. And then it says, therefore, we were buried with him, verse 4, through baptism into his death, so that just as uh, Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also, well, just as, and then we also, mm, should walk in newness of life. Now, before I continue, I'll tell you to go back to Genesis 1, when God started the new creation. Oh, now you can understand what Paul was saying. If anyone is in Christ, you are now a new creation. A new creation means what? Christ makes you new. That's why it's called the new birth. You can't miss it because Jesus Christ talked about it in John chapter 3 to Nicodemus who could not understand it. So many of us still don't understand it because we know we've grown and then somebody is saying to us, you must be born again. Of course, we use the term now, oh, are you a born again Christian? Oh, I... To be a Christian means to be born anew, born again, having somebody who has newness of life and mind you who also walks in it you don't just have it to play or to talk about it but you have it to walk in it to talk about it and even to run with god's spirit in it all right people so you have been made new so you're no longer the old you just because of christ it's not something you did it's all in christ we prove that right in christ you were born in christ you live in christ you were justified in christ you died and in christ you resurrect in christ you have eternal life in christ everything <laughs> right Okay, in newness of life, keep on going, Paul, please. Verse 5, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, ooh, hmm, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. These things can only be... Uh, said of people who are new okay all right knowing this that our old man was crucified with him oh you see how big that gets on us people 
crucified with Jesus? Yeah. That the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. Now, I'm so glad the text says we should no longer be slaves of sin. Because you know, it happens to the best of us. It happens to those who don't know anything. And it happens to the worst of us. To not get this thing. Some people might even believe that, oh yeah, so once you are talking about the new birth, that means you cannot sin. Uh, the Bible never said that anywhere. It doesn't say that you are perfect already. It says you are being perfected. And what does the Bible mean by your being perfected? It means what it means. It means that every time you are obedient to the word of God, God calls it righteousness. Remember? <laughs> That's it. You can't miss it. So then, if I'm walking in the spirit or walking in newness of life, God calls me perfect big time, big time, because the perfection is not in you. The perfection is in Christ. So remember, when God is looking at you, he looks at you through the lens of Christ. That's why the Bible urges us to stay in Christ. And Jesus also said to us to not depart from him. He says, remain in me let my word remain in you if it's like that then you will ask for whatever you want and that will be given unto you you know why that promise because if you stay in christ whatever you will ask your father in heaven will be according to the heart of god <laughs> as simple as that right okay so now the Bible says, if you confess your sins. Again, we said that uh, last week, that if the Bible says, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us your sin, etc. So that means God is already saying to us that, okay, you will be sinning, but you won't be living the life of a sinner so you won't take on that name uh, a sheep is a sheep the sheep may be lost or you you hear about a uh, sheep that have no pasture or that have no pastor or shepherd but you will never hear of a sheep that's not a sheep no you will hear about wolves who disguise themselves as sheep. You see? So a sheep is a sheep. If you are in Christ, that's it. You, you cannot be slaves of sin. Somewhere else, you, you're going to see that the Apostle Paul says, sin will not have power over you. Okay? But God is not saying, Oh, in order to follow me, you have to be perfect. That would have defeated the purpose of Christ. Because Christ came so that we can be made whole. We can be made perfect. So if we can be perfect before we come to Christ, then <laughs> this whole Christ thing is not, uh, you know, very good it's like a waste of our time right so it says no you can no longer be slaves of sin but listen to verse 7 for he who has died has been freed from sin you're freed from sin yes 
Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. You see, it's a principle. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. We too, we're going to live our life to, to never have to die to sin. We will die to self. We will die to all those other things the Bible asks us to, to die, but not in sin, not because of sin, not be, for being a slave of sin, right? And, and finally, there in, in the rest of verse 9, it says, death no longer has dominion over him. That's a strong statement, people. You know that many of us who belong to Christ, who trust in Christ, we die. And how is it that it says death has no dominion over you? <laughs> the Bible means what it says again. Listen, if you belong to life, what can death do again to you? Nothing. <laughs> So even when death uh, do this thing that we call lassicine, or even tries to give us a pakala, or tries to take away what we over here call life, we know that that doesn't mean that we die. Because Jesus promised this. If anyone believes in me, even though that person dies, he or she will live again. That's it. That's it. So death cannot have dominion. You see the word dominion. It doesn't say that death cannot ravish you from this earth and foolishness like that. No. It says death no longer has power over you. That means if death comes, you have to say to death, all right, welcome. Let's get things going. Just like when Judas was ready to betray Jesus, Jesus says, okay, what you are going to do, do it quickly. <laughs> you know, so you will say to death, Come on, do it quickly, because you have no power over me. You cannot scare me. <laughs> now, people, if, if the Bible says death cannot scare you, do you think you should allow someone or a group of someones, <laughs> if you allow me, to make you scared of what? If you don't know what, what's going on in, in the world, I'll tell you that I think they, they arrested 229 Christians in Afghanistan. They put them in plastic bags, they mistreated them, and then they left them on the public place to die, suffocating, okay? They can't save themselves, they, they are there to die. And people are going around. Oh, I, actually, they may have raped some of the women before they mistreated them. Now, what do you think the people are trying to do? They said, oh, yeah, you, you believe in Christ? Okay, we're going to rape you and we're going to see if Christ is going to come and, and get you out of there. Christ never promised that. On the contrary, he says, you will have tribulations in this world. Don't worry about it because I have overcome it. He says, don't be afraid of the people that can kill the body. After they kill your body, they cannot do anything anymore to you. And then he added, fear the one who can both kill the body and after that cast the soul 
in hell. So you see, people, there is no promise that nobody will be able to kill you. No, there is a promise that God will protect you so long as he sees fit. But if your death will bring his judgment faster on this world or to this world too, listen, it's all a welcome situation. We have to salute it and say, come Lord Jesus, okay? So we are not afraid of death because it has no dominion, no dominion over us. We're not afraid of people because people have no power over us. Once we pledge allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are Christ's child, guess what? You walk with your head up, never down. Okay? You're never so oppressed that you're depressed or compressed, whatever. No. We are pressed on every side, uh, Paul says, but we maintain the stay. We hold on. We, we still walk. Hmm. Why? Jesus showed us that. Verse 10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. <laughs> but the life that he lives, he lives to God. So also it is for us, right? Okay. Likewise also. I like it when I say something and the Bible will say exactly that. Likewise also, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God. In now I want to hear you guys say it. I'm going to cross my arm and hear you say, alive to God in whom? <laughs> Christ Jesus. Yes. Oh, only one person knows that? Oh, that's a shame. Let me hear you guys say it. Come on. Christ right, Jesus. Jesus. Christ Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, I almost said you ain't said it right yet. Listen, listen. You see, when I'm saying Christ Jesus, people, I'm excited. That's a name. <laughs> That's a name. The name of my Lord. The name of my Savior. Amen. Yeah. You know, you should be not polite saying it. You should be excited saying Christ Jesus, you know? So, okay, uh, that exercise has to continue. I'm not going forward. If I don't hear the name of my savior, the name of the one in whose death you're going to be baptized and resurrected and have to live in newness of life, let me hear you say so likewise you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin but alive to god in christ jesus our lord okay oh that's too too weak come on in christ, in christ jesus. jesus in christ jesus, in christ jesus. <laughs> it, listen it doesn't say simply in Christ Jesus, but it says in Christ Jesus, our Lord, because we don't have a second one. We won't have to deal with a second one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yeah. Edwidge, let me yes. hear you say I said, I said in Christ Jesus our Lord. <laughs> uh, that that was not Edwidge's voice. That's, That's me. Oh, it's you? Okay, you yes. have the same voice as your sisters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I, I thank you for that. 
Okay. You know, the, the days of people making decisions and being baptized, uh, not knowing what they're getting themselves into, and going to church, not knowing why they go, and stuff like that. Those days are not are not with us anymore, you know? Because I want people to open the Bible and see what it says so that you won't be bluffed either by me or by any other wolf. I'm not saying I'm a wolf, but by any wolf out there, okay? All right, so now let's conclude what Paul says, verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. Oh, wait a minute. Paul, earlier you said that sin will not have dominion over us. Yeah. How is that? And then why is it now you're saying, oh, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body? Yeah. You know what, people? What we could not do, Christ did for us. And then he secured that victory for us. And he says, now you walk in the victory. And I'm sure you guys have heard songs like, Plus que vainqueur, tel est notre devise, that we sing in French. So that means more than, than conqueror, that's our model. Okay, more than conqueror is your model. Okay, so do you walk in newness of life so that sin will not have power over you? Exactly, that's what that verse 12 is saying. Therefore, don't let it. <laughs> Don't let sin have power. How? By obeying God's word. And there is more, okay? It says, okay, obey God's word so you won't obey sin. Is that hard to do? Uh, you know what? What am I now? 50 something? 57? I know what it means to obey sin. We obey sin as if we were the most obedient children. But when it comes to God, we're like, oh, I don't. <laughs> you see how I almost said stupid, but it's almost that. That sin could get us easily by its lust, whereas God has a hard time making us obey his voice although he promises us more and better things you imagine people so it's okay god knows that and that's why he provided the way of escape okay and how does the bible say we will do that we will conquer sin because jesus saves us saved us from sin and now he says, now you're my purity, you're my righteousness, walk in it. How do you do that? Verse 13, do not present your members as instrument of unrighteousness to sin. You see, the power is all, all yours now. <laughs> yeah, as simple as that, okay? Do not present your bodies as an instrument of unrighteousness to sin. And you know that favorite verse of ours in Romans chapter 12, right? That says, I beseech you, therefore, therefore, yeah, because of all these things he's been saying to us in chapters 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He says, okay. Now I'm almost done with this chapter, except that I'm going to show you in chapter 13 how to obey authorities, etc. But while we're in chapter 12, 
I beseech you, therefore, my brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, for God's sake, and for yours too, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Living, yeah, because you died to sin, you resurrected with Christ. Now you are a living sacrifice. You don't have to be dead to be a living sacrifice. <laughs> what kind of nonsense that would have been, right? It's a living sacrifice. So while you're alive, you cannot allow death to happen to your members. It, it happens easily to our minds because that's the battlefield. Okay, people? We have to fight the devil there first and then we win the victory because he cannot help or help it when we beat him in here. You keep saying, I'm not going to sin. You you devil, you don't have to curse him, okay? Because he's, he's an authority, <laughs> even that God recognizes for God's purpose. Okay, let me explain that because I do not want you to misunderstand what I said. <sighs> Once again, I could take Job's story to show you that the devil comes from time to time in front of the Lord and asks him for permission to do foolishness in the world. And God grants him that permission. If somebody says to you, well, that was past, uh, it's the Old Testament. Tell the person, no, it's also in the new. And when they say, what? Where is that? You say, well, Jesus had a conversation with Satan. Satan came to him and asked him for permission to sift him like wheat. <laughs> okay? Guess what? He did not say, get behind me, Satan. Oh, I... I, I chase you in the name of... No. He simply says, okay, you want to do it? All right. And then Jesus went to Peter. What did he say? Peter, Satan had asked to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. Ah, uh, you see, you see. So that your faith would not falter. And after... You get strong. Jesus already know what's going to happen, right? Because you can't mess with the one who walks with Jesus, who stays in Jesus. So Jesus says, when you are strong, strengthen the brethren. So you see, people, we are like a bunch of Peters who can have the devil ask for permission to come after us. Besides, who do you think he's going to come after? But you, you who have made the decision to follow Jesus. You are his target. He doesn't care about those who are perverting themselves. He doesn't care about those party animals. Why should he care? They're drinking their lives away. They're, they're spliffing their... They're vaping their lives. Over. So Satan doesn't have to care about them because they are doing it on their own. They cannot blame Satan for it. Although you see Christians blame Satan for everything, right? Okay. Anyway, we will come back to those things. So the Bible says it's on us not to use our bodies as instruments of unrighteousness, but Present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. Now, understand this, and I know many of you will be preachers all the time. Uh, I mean, <laughs> as long as God calls you to do it. You realize what the Bible does here? When it says not to do things, it gives you the solution or it gives you the way of escape or it gives you what to do okay don't do that but do this 
let's take a uh, take an example from the old testament moses said for instance to the israelites oh i place before you life and death choose life that you may live you see god never just tells you uh i don't like you but he will tell you why <laughs> like he says i love jacob i hated esau why because esau doesn't have good sentiment and stuff like that the more he builds the more i'm gonna destroy go and check that out in uh, malachi chapter 2 okay so all right so god wants us to present our bodies to him as instrument of righteousness for sin shall not have dominion over you okay so baptism was described right there right but let me just read verses 22 and 23 and then i'll ask if you have questions again get ready verse 22 but now having been set free from sin uh, uh, did you guys hear that maybe i should read it again but now having been set free from from sin you know, if I could speak English to the Apostle Paul, I would say, are you kidding me? And he would answer, no, because that was the purpose Christ died, to set us free from sin. Isn't that what Jesus himself says? If the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. So he, he, you mean to tell me he said all these things? and they amount to nothing because we're still in sin or we'll sin no people i know you guys don't talk like that you know uh, this question of oh we are we all sinners no all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god boom oh now you've been washed you've been set free in christ jesus now I'm no longer that. <laughs> I'm a child of God. You cannot be a child of God and not so child of God at the same time, right? Because to be a child of God, you must have received the reconciliation. Oh yeah, we talked about being reconciled to God. You see, guys, it makes big sense to us now that it's not just words. Listen to what the Bible says. To those who have received Christ, to them Christ, or the Word, give the right. It's a right you now have to become children of God. And you have the right to your citizenship. And now listen to the last part having and having become slaves of god Ooh, you see i told you that's what the bible does to us it says don't be slaves of sin but now he says you can be slaves of god you see <laughs> okay so you have your fruit to holiness and the end the end of all that exercise me preaching you living and we believing in christ the end of it is eternal life everlasting life for the wages of sin is death the wages of sin is death but sin, death doesn't have power over me so he's not talking to me uh but the gift of god yes i'll take that is eternal life in christ jesus our lord 
So, so long as we are in Christ, chapter 8 will tell us there is no condemnation for us. Remember, the law condemns us and sin did a bad thing to us too. But thanks be to the Lord Jesus Christ. What can we say? Listen, I'm a child of God. And say it with a lot of confidence, people. Don't be prideful like, oh, I'm better than you because I'm a child of God. That's not what the Bible ever said we should be doing or say. The, but the Bible says to acknowledge that you are a child of God and live like one so that those who see you can acknowledge to the glory of your father in heaven that you know this one is different i don't know why he always greets people he always uh, takes care of people if he sees that you need something he's ever ready to help oh this guy he knows how to relate to people um this lady uh, she's a people person or something you know whatever they have to say about you to give glory to god god will take it and god will make you better each day all right so do we now have some questions um hi so speaking of like this <laughs> basically i just want to say um Thank you very much for all that you've been doing so far, because like, honestly, if it wasn't for you and like for God and like without me reading the Bible, I wouldn't really do, I would not be doing as great as I am right now in school because like beforehand oh. I've been like, you know, doing not so well, you know, getting in trouble and a lot of stuff. Oh. Now I've, like, you? The Bible. <laughs> yes, me. It's crazy to believe. I've been oh. reading the Bible a lot and praying a lot and I've been doing way better now because sometimes when you think before like doing actions you have to realize that whatever you do especially as a christian it represents god so yes. yes i just want to thank you for that okay well thank god for giving me my speech back though i'm working still on it but boy god god knew what he was doing because he had to take some of it to, to, for his glory <laughs> i praise him for that go ahead <laughs> all right thank you Yes, yes, yes. Right. you're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. I don't have a question, but um, I just wanted to share like a revelation that um, I, I like I feel I received like while listening to today. Um, oh. I, I thought it was cool how uh, I, th I thought it was cool how we learned that um, you know, like I, I feel like for a lot of people, like if if you don't really understand how baptism works, it's not it's not really gonna it's not really gonna affect you the same way. You know, um, and I, I like, I think, yeah, I think, I think before I feel like I thought baptism was only like just the act of baptism, but like, it's not, like, I'm learning that it's not just the act, but it's that, you know, like, like the fact that, you know, going into baptism, you're going into like, you're essentially dying with Christ, but then afterwards you're living. Right. So you're like, yeah. that means that after your baptism, like, you're, like you're living the Christ, you're like, you're basically living the life that. Like, that Christ wants you to live essentially. And Absolutely. like that is a whole part of your baptism. That's like, that's the new life. So yes, like that's, yes. that's very cool, very cool. Mm -hmm. you, you would not have been born if you did not die. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you know, yeah. So he made you die with him so that you can uh, grow back as a new plant. Yes, no, I, I feel like that's so, like that's so, um, that's such like a like a loving action like god like he he's allowing us to essentially die the same death that jesus did like like who am i to die the same death yeah, that jesus you know? did you know and like and like who am i to be able to like like i i don't i don't i don't deserve you know to be um you know raised up as like a child of god and like you see the same lord to have dominion over death but he loved us that much to be able to do that so that's like that's that's actually amazing like it, like it makes the whole act of baptism like that much more like significant and spiritual like it's it's deep you get it you get it and you know as you mentioned that you know what's 
what's so poignant about this, what's so strong about this, it mm -hmm. is that God so loves us that he, he, he came down in the flesh. He says, you know, as for you guys, I'm going to give what I have here that you guys love also. I love it too, but I'm going to give it so that I can make you like me. Although you try to be so unlike me that you listen to my, 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 my detractor or my enemy uh, mm -hmm. or the enemy of your soul. But I'm going to make sure it happened again. And so I'm going to be the, the leader. You follow me. You see, that's why Jesus all the time keeps on saying, okay, follow me. So follow him means what? Follow him in his birth, new birth. Follow mm -hmm. him in his life. You may have to run into Egypt or to go into the world to study, but you have to come back and you have to have your ministry because we are ministers of God here. <laughs> wow. And now, if you have to die, don't worry about the sad you see or sees and far he sees, you know, don't worry about them but continue doing what you do and when they try to kill you don't worry hang on that tree or that cross or even if jesus said you can ca carry it every day okay <laughs> and when they think they're finished with you it's over no it's the victory coming and now Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11 says, Oh, because he was obedient, even to the death of the cross. Now, God has highly exalted him and has given him the name that is above every name. And if you look in the book of Revelation, Jesus promises us the same thing. He says, Oh, if you endure, I'm going to give you a name that only you will know. <laughs> so, so, in glory, Jesus Christ. You see? Wow. We can't do it, my brother. We're going to stay with him and die with him if we must, and then be raised with him. And then uh, people have to be very careful with us because when we are raised back we're gonna be like fire that they can no longer extinguish <laughs> victorious yes right. yeah that's that's actually one of my favorite points to talk about how you know the cross like it was meant like the cross was meant to symbolize like it, 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 like the devil meant to use the cross as a way to like you know persecute Christians and intimidate Christians because yeah. like um like that was one of the worst one of the worst you know um, public did, right? just, yeah and like so like the the cross was meant to symbolize the feet sadness and all that but like the cross as we see it now like that's our main symbol of Christianity you know like that's that cross symbolizes victory and like you know all that so and, and yeah. Jesus granted us that same ability to be able to overcome sin. By saying like, here you like, listen, like, just follow me, and you know, you can you can be like me. Exactly, exactly, Easy. absolutely, yes. And uh, be on time, and let's get ready to rumble, okay? Because it's gonna be a, one of the most pleasant times we will ever know, okay, in our lives. So uh, may God richly bless you and may he give you that enthusiasm that he, he can only give to to people who love him okay and want to to follow him okay may, and may he inspire you as you 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 grow in his word to be the best amen. that you can be all right amen Amen.
All right. So, all right. Uh, let's pray and uh, and dismiss. Brother Cameron, I I would like you to pray pray once again. <laughs> no problem. Uh, everyone could bow their heads and close their eyes. Uh, dear Lord Jesus, I just want to say thank you um, again for this uh, just another opportunity, Father, for us to be able to gather again in your name, Father God, so that we can be able to um, just learn, Father God, and be edified. And 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 for this opportunity for you for you to um, speak to us, Father God, uh, personally, and reveal something to each and every single one of us, Lord. And I just want to say um, that we're just very grateful for this opportunity, Lord. And, um, Lord, I just want to pray that you would. Uh, just continue to guide us, Lord, and, uh, and just uh, prepare us, Father God, as we um, get ready for this weekend, Lord. I want to pray that you would uh, just prepare our minds and our hearts, Father God, so that, um, and I, I just want to pray that uh, it also goes well, that just also goes well, Father God, that you would also bless the, um, that time there, Father Lord. And yes, Father, I just want to say thank you again. Um, thank you for all of us coming here. Thank you for all that we've learned, Lord. And thank you for just, um, thank you for Pastor Judy and, and blessing him and allowing him to take the time out of his day to, to teach us, Lord. So, Father, I just want to say thank you again. And your son, Jesus Christ, precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. So, Amen. thank you, everyone, for showing up. And uh, thank you most of all for really uh, being uh, the, the, the good students you were. Okay. So, keep on reading God's word and pray, 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 because God has a lot to give us and to teach us, okay? To him be the glory forever. Amen? Amen. 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 Good night, yes. I have a good night, everyone. Amen, amen. Bye. Have a good night. Good night, yes. Amen. Good night. 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 Good night.